Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. It's a good one, and it's one that I've had several of you guys request over the uh, last couple of months, just regarding the best tips that I can give, like rules of fishing, simple rules that you can apply no matter where you're at in the country. And I gotta tell you guys, I sat down and I started just kind of jotting down different rules. And I want to talk about five today, but within about three minutes, I came up with like 15 different things that I could talk about for a long period of time. So I'll tell you right now, if you guys like this video, I will continue to put out more videos with rules and tips that you should that you should apply to your fishing. These are really simple things. So if you like it, hit the like button and I will continue to do more of these because I think I could pump out like a hundred different tips that would help you guys catch fish. Just one of those things that it's like, man, when I sit down, so many things are going through my head. So we're going to start it off with today's video of five things that will hopefully help you catch more fish. And these are basic rules of fishing. And it's pretty much regardless of species, they're going to be geared towards bass, but it doesn't really matter. It applies to like bluegill, to different freshwater species, same thing, the saltwater species. I think these are just good basic rules to apply when you head out on the water. So the first one that I want to talk about is just isolated targets. Isolated targets will provide you a much better chance at catching fish than if you're fishing a giant piece of cover. And what I mean by that is, let's take docks, for example. You know when you're going down the lake and you see one dock in a cove and you think to yourself, ah, I'm not going to go in there and fish it because it's just going to take me more time to get in, fish the one dock, and there's nothing else to fish. That one dock is probably better off being fished than if you were to pull into a cove that has 30 docks in it. And the reason for that is, if there is a fish in that cove with the one dock, they're gonna hang out by that one dock. You know where they're at. If there's a fish in that cove with 30 docks, you gotta fish 30 docks to find that one fish. It works that way with everything. If you're fishing a giant grass flat, yes, there might be a lot of fish, but to find that group of fish is going to be a lot harder than if you pull up and you fish an isolated grass patch that's 10 feet by 10 feet. You can fish it so much more efficiently and just you're going to find out real quick if there's a fish living in that little grass patch or on that dock or that isolated lay down tree. It works like that everywhere. If you can find a boulder that's on a flat somewhere, chances are good there's a bass next to it, regardless of species. I mean, largemouth, smallmouth spots, you could catch any of them off of a boulder on a flat. You could catch any off of a dock. That's how it is. So it's about high, high percentage fishing. If you have the ability to find isolated targets, then you want to fish isolated targets. In my opinion, it's much better off to find a bunch of isolated targets than to just camp in one giant spot and try to find the needle in the haystack. So that's item number one. The second item is something I have talked about on this channel before, and it's just coming down to identifying the type of day that it is. Specifically, if you're fishing a bluebird post front day, you do not want to be fishing high up in the water column. You want to be throwing a bottom bait. I don't care where you're at. You, you will increase the number of fish that you catch on a post front bluebird sky day if you're fishing on the bottom. Throw a Ned rig, a Carolina rig, a crankbait. That will do much better than if you're throwing a jerkbait or a topwater. It's just, that's how it is, guys. That's, I, I, it took me a lot, a while to really beat that into my head, but I will tell you that is a hard and fast rule at this point for me. Another rule, you need to recognize that there's current no matter where you're at, whether it's natural current from a river that's flowing into a lake or the river itself, or it's wind-driven current that is literally pushing water in one direction, or it's wind-driven current where you may have water getting sucked from one end of the lake or pushed back to another end of the lake that's going to create current. The reason you want to recognize that there is current, and it could be the lightest current flow possible, is that current will position the fish in certain spots. So if you have an, a rock or a tree or a weed clump, 
the fish will sit behind it and they'll always utilize that current to try to feed. They are opportunistic fish and that's what you need to recognize. So if you have any current flow at all, and chances are there's always current flow. Like if you're fishing on the bank or you're sitting in the boat and you look down and you see how there's particles in the water are just floating around and you just think that they're floating because there's no wind at all, they're moving in that water for a reason. There is a light current flow. So the fish will almost always position themselves based on the current flow. So that's the third thing. The fourth thing is just color selection. Keep your color selection simple. Yes, there are hundreds of different colored baits out there that you can choose from, but really what you need to know is in dark water, you want to fish a dark bait or a super bright bait. You know, the color for me probably isn't even as important in really dark water as the vibration and the sound that the bait puts off. But when you're choosing colors, stick with your blacks and black and blues and, you know, purples or your white and you know oranges in dark color. And if you're fishing clear water, stick with your natural colors, your greens, your browns, your, your clears, your shad colors. Keep it simple. You really don't need to have 4,000 colors of baits. Yes, there are times where one bait color will work better than others, but as a rule of thumb, you can fish light colored baits and dark colored baits in dark muddy water, and you can fish natural colored baits in clear water. That's a simple rule that I follow. The last one has to do with bait size. You will almost always get more bites if you throw a small bait versus a big bait. So if you're just looking to get bites, downsize. It's always better off to downsize. And just because you downsize to a Ned Rig or a small tube or a small four inch worm or a small swim bait, that doesn't mean you're not going to catch a big fish. Those baits catch big fish, but it does mean that you will get more bites. That is just pretty standard. If you throw a big jig or a, a glide bait or a big swim bait, you're going to get less bites. The chances are your quality bite will be better, but again, it doesn't mean you're going to catch bigger fish as a whole either. It just kind of means you're going to get less bites, but you're targeting a better quality fish. So if you're looking to get bites or you're looking to introduce people into fishing, downsize. Go with a smaller bait. I'm telling you, you get a ton more bites. And it's just something that I think is a tournament angler. If fishing is really tough, you're better off downsizing. So that was five things, guys. I have so many more basic rules of fishing that I consider them that if you want more of them, hit that like button and I will do more videos like this. I could pump out a ton of these. Uh, and I enjoy doing these because it's a simple way to share knowledge and they're not targeted to any specific technique or bait. It's kind of really broad all over the place, but they are ways to learn quickly. And I think they're very valuable to know. So if you want more, hit that like button. Stay tuned, guys. Another video coming out tomorrow.